So this is how we left our weather app. And now I want to change it in a way that it automatically starts looking when we type. So how could we implement this behavior? With observables, it's to be honest, not really that hard. We would start here in our weather search component. And of course here, I want to listen to all changes in the, on this input element here. So I will add such, a, such an event listener and input is the method or the event I'm looking for. This will fire whenever well, I type something into this field. I then want to call a method, let's call it on search location. And I want to pass the current value of this input field. Therefore, I will give this a local variable called input. And then I can just pass input.value. And with this on every keystroke, I will trigger this method here and I will pass the current value of this input field. Now let me next so add this method here, this on search location, which will get the city name as an input because I will get a string, the input of the, or the value of this input field. And I know that this input field is there to search for a city. That's why I called the variable here city name. Now I could add this code here and let's see what then happens. Here, of course, I would replace this with just city name since we're directly getting this information. And now let's see what happens as I type. It added a couple of <laughs> cities, which I don't know why this match Berlin at any point. Uh, Tiergarten is in Berlin, so this is okay. But yeah, it, it just on every key type, it triggers this API and looks for this city. The problem with this is not only that we spam our API, and by the way, on Open App Weather Map, there is a limit on requests per minute, I think. So we spam this API, this is bad, and we get a couple of, well, cities we don't really want here. We don't want to add them right away. And it would be better to, yeah, we would just want to see some suggestions here and then add the one we want. However, these suggestions should also not update with every keystroke, but only let's say after every, every keystroke that actually changed the word. And only all, let's say every 300 milliseconds so that the user actually has to pause for a short period before we send out a request. So that while we're typing Berlin, we're waiting for the user to finish typing before querying for B, for BE, for BER, and so on. Now, this sounds very complicated, but the great thing is with observable, it's easy to implement. However, we will need to change the way we use this component or how we work here. I will get rid of this logic here because this is not what we will be doing here. Instead, what I want is I want a separate observable stream, so a separate observable, so to say, for which I personally can create events and fire them and I define when they are fired, all 300 milliseconds, for example. And then this stream will, I will also listen to it, whenever I fulfill these requirements, reach out to the HTTP service and fire this or send this request and listen to this response. In order to do this, I need some kind of object which I can both listen to because I want to listen for the user to pause typing, but I also want to fire the event. I want to emit events because I want to emit the user just typed. And the observable library RxJS offers such, a, such an object, a subject. This is an observer and an observable at the same time. So I will create such an subject here. I will call it search stream. And this will be a new subject. And subject has to be imported from RxJS subject. It will be of type string. 
And now what do I do with the subject? On each type here, on each time I type into this input field, I will use this search stream and I will call the next method and emit the city name which was entered. And this basically means it will trigger up on each keystroke, it will emit this value to the subject and now I have to configure the subject in a way that it will ignore a lot of these events until a certain set of conditions is met. For example, 300 milliseconds since the last hit or since the last event. I will do this in the onInit method and therefore I will implement onInit in my class here. And then here implement the ng onInit method. And in this method, what I will do is I will use my search stream. And now I could subscribe to it to listen to all these input changes. And I will do this first to show how this works. I will get back some data and what, what data would we get back? Well, probably the value the user entered. So let's lock this data to confirm this. Now, if I type something here, you can see in the console, I'm getting my inputs here. And this is because, well, on each keystroke, I emit the current value. And here I set up, well, a listener. Now, this is almost what I want, but not quite. I want to take this value and send it out to the API and use it there. I want to call well, what, I, what I'm currently doing here in on submit, I want to call it here too, but with this value. Now, a good way to do this is I can use the switch map operator on this observable. And what, what switch map does is it allows me to map one stream, one observable into another. And I'll best show this with an example here. So what I will do is I will have my, 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 my input, which is a string. And I'm using a fat arrow function here, of course, again. And then I will call the weather service search weather data method on this term. And this will indeed also, or on this input, excuse me, and this will subscribe to it. And down here, data will be something different. Let's see what is data now. If I type Berlin, you can see now we're getting back a weather data object because we're transforming our observable, so to say. We're saying use the input we're emitting on each keystroke, but don't map this into the data you use here. Instead, map it into a new observable where you pass this value and then the new data, the new response of this overall observable stream should be the response of this observable. This is the translation you could give to, to this operator, to the switch map operator. And with this, we're now on each keystroke searching for this city. Now we're almost there because, well, with this we could achieve what we want and we could update, but we would do this on each keystroke. But to begin with, let's do this. I therefore will add a new field here called data, which will be of type any and an empty object at the beginning. I will then here set this data field equal to the data we get back here. And then I can in my template output city found and then here I will output data name to output the city name. So let's try it again. Berlin. As you can see it updated. It looks pretty good but still we're spamming the API and well we will reach our limit sometimes and then we have to wait for a minute. And generally, this is not the best style because these are a lot of unnecessary HTTP requests. But what can we do to reduce the number of HTTP requests? It is really simple. We add exactly two 
new operators to our observable stream here. Before we switch our observable stream and before we call this new observable and make this request, I want to, for one, give this a debounce time of 300. This is milliseconds here as an argument and debounce time operator means or this debounce time operator does that we will only react to events which are at least 300 milliseconds after the last event received. So here we're emitting events on each type but we will ignore all of them until 300 milliseconds have passed and then we will use the last event we got. So once we finish typing and 300 milliseconds have passed we will use the very last and only this result that we got. Now this would be great but we would still send multiple requests in case that let's say we type then we accidentally press a wrong button or a wrong key and we undo this but we leave some time between this and therefore in theory we would have 300 milliseconds between it but the actual value has not changed. In order to react to this case I'll add another operator distinct until changed and this takes no argument here and this simply means only use this event you received here and event of course is this new value entered into this input if it's different to the last event and with this we're safe we're waiting for 300 milliseconds and we're only reacting to changed events so with this if i save this and now we have a look at our application I'll watch this city found and I'll use another city like Chicago. Did you see how it waited until it updated? So I obviously was typed so let's try this again Chicago and it only updated after I was finished instead of all the time. Now if I add O's here nothing changes but if I remove characters you see it changes but if I quickly change it back, get it back again, we got this request and we're not spamming the server with requests. So this has been an important step here, of course. The next step is to add the city to our list. Now this is very simple. We no longer need to pass the form here, so I can get rid of this. Don't need that anymore. I will also get rid of the observable call. I will leave the part in the middle because I still need to construct my new Weber item. However, what I do here is I can simply access this data because here we're already storing the found city in this data field. So I can just add this, this keyword, keyword and with this we should be good to go. And now last time I'll have a look at this app. Load Berlin, click add city and here we got Berlin. And this is the state in which I want it. Now in the next video, we'll have a look at how to set up profiles.